It's finally Friday, Falcons. I'm Carly. And I'm Max. And you're watching the NAFO News. We hope you all had a spirit-filled week. I can't believe it's already been 10 years since Nation Ford has been around. Me neither. Just think when the doors first opened on August 20th, 2007, there were only 941 students and 62 teachers. And now there's over 2,000 students and the district is preparing to open yet another high school in 2019. It's interesting to think about what the future holds for Fort Mill, but I wonder what Spirit Week was like back in 2007. Oh, I'm sure they look good, but not as good as our student body this week. Everybody looked amazing dressed up every day. All in anticipation for tonight's homecoming game against Indian Land. I had such a great week and I cannot wait to see some football tonight. Well, you're going to have to because we got a show to do. Coming up, Rose gives us the inside scoop on what's it like in Spirit Club. We remember the Falcons with Mary. And we get to see all the beautiful people of our homecoming court. All that and more on this week's episode of the NAFO News. <laughs> It's nice to see our NAFO news staff all decked out in red and black. It sure is, but nobody does Falcon Pride quite like the Spirit Club. True that. They really don't get enough credit for all the hard work they do. Then let's give them some. Here's Rose with a behind-the-scenes look on the Spirit Club and their homecoming preparations. Hey Falcons, I'm Rose. Spirit Week has to be one of my favorite weeks of the year. I love seeing everyone's school spirit. Spirit Week is very fun, but some students go above and beyond to keep Spirit Week flowing all year long. Let's hop on over to Ashland Donald to receive the inside scoop on Spirit Club. Spirit Club meets every Wednesday after school. We're in charge of all the pep rallies. We are in charge of the home games that we make posters for. We are in charge of the Adopt an Athlete, which is where you can adopt one of your favorite athletes that you bring goodies for and you support for their games that they're attended in. And we also planned out the games that you played at lunch this past week. This has been Rose reporting for the NAFO News. Now back to Carly and Max. Wow, I knew the Spirit Club did a lot for our school, but I had no idea how much planning and coordination really goes into it. Despite all their hard work, it looks like they always have fun. I wonder if former Falcons would say the same thing about their time at Nation Ford. It would be interesting to see where they are today and how our school has made them the people that they are. In the spirit of our homecoming and our 10th anniversary, here's Mary helping us remember the Falcons from years past. Hey Falcons, it's Mary. In honor of NAFO's 10th anniversary and the homecoming game tonight, we've caught up with alumni from some of Nation Ford's first graduating classes to see where these Falcons have flown. Ellen Bright graduated NAFO in 2012 and realized she wanted to be a math teacher after having Ms. Simmons. After attending USC Upstate with a major in Secondary Education for Math, she was hired at Nation Ford last year and is currently teaching Algebra 2 and Data Analysis. Catch her in C-107 and on the soccer field in the spring. Brandon Sirac graduated in 2010. On Saturdays, you can find him making lunch and dinner for those in need in the Fort Mill area. He enjoys watching NASCAR and going to the High Five Club, an adult enrichment center. On Sundays, you can see him cheering on his number one hero, Cam Newton, and the rest of the Carolina Panthers. Andy Farrah graduated NAFO in 2009, which marked the year of the first graduating class of Nation Ford High School. After graduating from USC, he moved to LA and is now an agent trainee at Creative Art Agency, where he represents stand-up comedians and puts them on tour. Tommy Warner also graduated with the first class in 2009. He became the first yearbook editor at Nation Ford and started the very first yearbook with our own Mr. Chuck Walker. While attending College of Charleston, he interned at Bon Appetit magazine in New York to pursue his dream of becoming a journalist. He now lives in New York City and works as an editorial assistant at Epicurious, an online website that gives the public recipes, menu ideas, and cooking tips. He is also on their Facebook Live showing viewers step-by-step -step how to cook specific recipes. This has been Mary reporting for the NAFO News. Back to you, Carly and Max. 
It's incredible to see some of the things former Falcons have done. I'm more excited to see what our current Falcons are going to do on the field tonight. We get it, Carly. You're pumped for tonight. But let's leave it up to the pros to get us ready for the game. Sounds like a plan. Here's Gianni and Cade with the playbook. What's up, Falcons? I'm Gianni. And I'm Cade. All of our sports teams did awesome last week, but it's even more special this week because it's homecoming. With all that being said, let's take a look into the playbook. Here comes the, here comes the, here comes the, y'all don't really want it like that. The girls' volleyball team is off to a solid start, starting off 2-0 in the region, getting huge wins against Rock Hill and Clover. That's right, G. Their next match is September 27th versus our Crosstown Rivals 4-0. Make sure you're there to support them and be loud. Good luck, ladies. Our boys got a huge win last Friday night, winning 35-14. Dude, maybe you should be a starting wide receiver for Lancaster. That's right, G. You come out and support our boys during the homecoming game this Friday versus Indian Land. Wear your black and red. Powderpuff was a huge turnout for FBLA. Shout out to my junior girls for winning in sudden death overtime. Proud of y'all. That's it for this week's show. Good luck to all of our team. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Caden Gianni. After seeing that, I don't know who wouldn't be ready to beat Indian Land. While our football team has been training all summer to beat Indian Land tonight, one of our fellow Falcons has been fighting to beat something much greater. My name is Jalen Willers, a.k.a. J. Will and I'm a cancer survivor. For me, it all started back in uh, January where I had recurring fevers every two weeks, uh, body aches, body chills. I, at first I thought it was just a simple fever, but then it kept on coming back and back. I went to go see a, the doctor and uh, I didn't think it was much at first, but then as I continued to get more sick, more tired, same blood test, blood test after blood test. I continued to play basketball through all this that's why I think it took so long, because I got diagnosed in May. After all the CT scans, it came back that I had Hodgkin's lymphoma stage 4. Hodgkin's lymphoma is a cancer in your lymphatic system, which helps fight off diseases like white blood cells. That's why it's categorized as a blood cancer. To treat this, it's five cycles of chemo, uh, which is pretty brutal. Um, it makes you feel just like complete trash. You know, the side effects of it are obviously hair loss. You know, I have um, some nerve damage in my hands and in my feet. Uh, tiredness, obviously, you get tired really easily. And, um, yeah, chemo just sucks. The week I got diagnosed, um, my basketball, my AAU team had a state championship tournament down in Columbia. I couldn't play, obviously, but I felt like I was there in spirit because they made it all the way to the state championship and won it by four. And four is my number for everything. It's my number for basketball, it's my birthday, it's everything. And for them to win it by four, it's just something so special. I think it's beyond, you know, like what it actually, like just winning the state championship. To win it by four, it definitely means something more than that. After I got diagnosed, I couldn't help myself to feel, you know, sad and down, but Everyone who reached out to me um, really helped me a lot. And I really appreciate that. Um, from everyone shaving their heads to buying the bracelets, that all meant so much than anyone ever thought. And that really helped me you know, get through chemo and be strong through the whole thing. Because having that so much support is just you know, my driving force. And uh, that's how I beat cancer. Over the years, our news crew has had the opportunity to cover hundreds of life-changing stories like Jalen's. It's amazing to see how far we've come. Here's some of the first NAFO News members to tell us what it was like back in the day. My name's Forrest Holloman. Um, I was actually around back when the NAFO News started, uh, and that was back in my freshman year, which was 2009, um, all the way through 2013. Um, all through those years, we started with a handy cam and three people, but uh, eventually it turned into a, an actual live program, uh, which was just amazing to all of us to be able to be part of something that was like the real world and doing something live, um, doing the actual news. 
Yeah, well, I'm Carly Williams, and fast forward a few years later from Forrest, um, I was on the news in 2015, which was my sophomore year of high school. Some of my most favorite memories from working on the show were definitely being down on the field during the games and just getting to watch everything live. Um, it was awesome just, you know, being in the middle of all the action and just being able to control, you know, what people were seeing during the news and during some of the demo reels that we would do on the news. Um, some of my favorite times were also whenever we would go to SIPA in Columbia and that's the Southern Interscholastic Press Association. So we had a lot of competitions. Um, there was a rave, kind of a dance thing, and um, it was it was a lot of fun. So probably some of the biggest skills that we picked up on the show, um, a lot of time management and learning how to do things on the fly. So, you know, with a live show, you've got that aspect of anything can happen in, in the moment. Um, you know, you can't you can't just let that happen. You've gotta, you've gotta work with it uh, and manage it in the moment. We definitely got to learn how to be a little bit more well-rounded as well. Um, a lot of us went into it with an interest in journalism and you know some people did come in and just kind of wanted to help out and um, we did definitely learn how to accommodate both and um, it was great just meeting all kinds of different people. This show has been full of NAPO's past in honor of our 10 year anniversary, but there are some things in the present that you should know. Here's Kayla and Caitlin with announcements. Hey Falcons, I'm Caitlin and I'm Kayla. This Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m. our cheerleading team has a competition in the main gym. Be sure to come out and support your Falcons. Senior casual photos, quotes, and baby pictures are due by October 4th. You can turn these in at the yearbook table during lunch. Seniors, if you wish to take the as bad, be sure to see your guidance counselor to get signed up. The PSAT will be administered to all 10th grade students October 19th. 11th graders who wish to participate can sign up and pay online. If you're interested in joining the Young Republicans Club, they're meeting at 340 in Route N506 directly after school on Wednesday, September 28th. The Young Democrats Club is meeting September 30th, also in N506 at 340. See you at the poll will be on September 28th at 745. A Live at 25 will be November 5th at 9 o'clock at Fort Mill High School. Classes will be free. That's all for this week's announcements, Falcons. Now back to you, Max and Carly. Well, that's just about it for this week's episode. But we couldn't possibly end the show without showing you your 2016 homecoming court. That's all we got for this week, Falcons. Can't wait to see you all decked out in the stands tonight. For the NAFO News, I'm Max. And I'm Carly. See, see you next week. week.